goal for our project RV. It's a lot of work. Wish there was smell vision so you could smell the strange odor that's in here. Can't quite explain it. So we are going full bore on this rehab project. I want to replace all the carpet everywhere because it just stinks and it's dirty. So even this chair we want to reupholster. And this is day one of, of the rehab project. So this is going to start tearing all this stuff out. Hopefully get the smell out. And all this stuff even. You can see how clean the carpet used to be. Uh, which isn't even saying much. But I'm going to get all this stuff out and do something different. I'm not sure what we're gonna do yet, but all we know is we want it out. This is what it looks like. I've already stripped off a few of these little uh, plastic pieces and I'm getting ready to take up the carpet. As you can see, I've already done the doghouse area. But as you can see, this carpet's disgusting and uh, we can't live like this. So we're gonna rip it all out and, and replace it with something. Still not sure yet what, but as you can guess, this is pretty difficult stuff to get out. They glued this stuff down tight, so I'm going to have to use one of these tools. What I did is uh, one of these little multifunction tools. Got it at Harbor Freight for not a whole lot. Put a, a little blade on the front that's good for just chiseling things up, a little scraper blade, and just turned it on and worked my way through. So I just got started and wanted to film the before progress, and I'll get back to you with some after progress. So I've made some progress on the driver's compartment up here. All that is very sticky and I highly recommend using gloves because otherwise you're going to have carpet hairs and glue all over you. It's pretty bad. But it does peel up after you get past the initial edges. You don't necessarily need to scrape away the whole time. So I'm back here now working on this carpet. I've taken out a few things uh, like the latches that hold the slide in. And I've cut it up a little bit, but it looks like this is going to be a lot easier to pull out, like regular carpet in a house. Looks like they haven't glued it down, which I was really hoping would be the case when I was working up there. So looks like the glue kind of stops after the driver's compartment. So we'll see how it goes. So I pulled up a big swatch of this here, and I was going to say one other tip to use, because it's hard to tell right now, but the engine's been running for about an hour, hour and a half so I could run the air conditioner while I was doing this job. And uh, these floors get pretty warm when the engine's on and it just kind of peeled up, just uh, slipped right off once these floors got warm enough. As you can see the glue that's on these things and it's amazing that this is a 1998 Winnebago Itasca and, and that glue is still holding good. So this stuff's pretty strong, pretty potent. Uh, so use gloves, highly recommended. Harper and Penelope are here working on the on the trim. I'm using a, a brass brush spot, and some bleach spray. <laughs> and I've been getting rid of all these little uh, little things here. This is like such a bad, uh, such ugly trim pieces. But I've kind of had to go through them all and scrub them down really good. My assistants Harper and Penelope cleaning off my trim pieces. And the little guy feels like his place is being taken. <laughs> my arm is sore. Hey, I got guys. this side. Looks a lot better without that ugly, ugly sofa in there. Get rid of that little box, whatever that's there for, for the shades. And start yanking out this carpet. If so, if I can get that done today, it'll have been a good day. So this is what she looks like with the ugly couch out and the ugly carpet ripped up. 
and that's uh, years of dirt that was underneath the carpet. That when they were sweeping it, it probably just went underneath the carpet and hid. So that's probably a lot of this stuff's contributing to the stink. The reason why this is torn up over here is because it's kind of hard to rip the carpet out from underneath the slide. Even with the slide fully extended, there was probably another four or five inches of carpet underneath. And uh, from a lot of the stuff that I was reading online, they were telling all kinds of crazy stories about sliding the slide out farther than it's supposed to go and lifting it on a forklift and bending it backwards so you could get underneath and pop it up. So I was kind of worried thinking, oh great. So I thought maybe I'll tear up the wood and see if I can get underneath. But underneath, as you can see, is styrofoam. And underneath that is metal. I thought maybe I could go through the styrofoam and rip up the carpet and pop it up. But it turns out it just took long, hard uh, pulls. Um, try to be careful not to rip the carpet because then you'll be really screwed. But if you can get a nice big hunk of carpet and pull just kind of uh, steadily, it'll come loose from whatever's in there. It seems like something's pinching it down. Can't be sure, but there weren't staples, so something was holding it in there really tight. So I was able to pull it out and everything went out in, in uh, one semi-big piece. I kind of cut it here because it's time to quit for the night, but pretty good progress for the first demo day. So with this glue that holds the carpet down in the front, I've let it sit up here for like three weeks and it's still really sticky to the touch. Um, some spots worse than others, but I tested some of this today. It's called Tough Strip. It's just basic sprayable stripper and uh, it's worked really good so far on this glue. I uh, just took a little scraper to it and it came right up. It's really gross, it's a dirty job but it's getting this stuff out of here a lot better than anything else, better than just elbow grease. So I'm gonna clean this up and make this look a lot nicer so when we cover this with flooring, it's gonna look much better. I mean, they use so much glue. I mean, spots back here, it's still wet. So I want it gone. And this stuff seems to be doing the trick. This is where the doghouse goes, in case you haven't figured it out by now. And we had a little side project that we have to do before we put this, the uh, doghouse back on. But we had laid some insulation uh, because we had a real issue with hot air from the engine coming through the firewall to where my feet would be when I drove. It was incredibly hot and we haven't even taken any long trips in this thing yet. Just down the street to get gas basically. Uh, but we laid some insulation there, the same insulation we used in the doghouse on the inside. And we used some spray foam that you use for, um, it doesn't let fumes come through or, or anything like that, it, it creates a good little fire break. So uh, we're gonna keep that there to muffle the sound and not let any exhaust gases in because we did have a little problem with that. Um, we used this product here, which was fantastic. Uh, Fiberfix Rigid Patch because it's hard to see here, but over in this area, there was a good six inches vertical and a half inch gap wide crack where uh, in the metal, it just was not welded together well uh, by the manufacturer, I would assume. Uh, it was wide open there, which was letting all that hot air in. So we used this Fiberfix Rigid Patch, and oh man, it was so easy. Uh, go to their website and check it out. Highly recommended. Uh, I did not film the process because I had enough to do to, to just finish it. So go to their website, you can check it out, but it was awesome for fixing that. Uh, we're going to cover that up, but it should do really well in keeping out the... Uh, the uh, the elements, the heat and the smell and all that stuff. We're gonna do strip lap on all these little crevices here and just kind of tie it in all the way around. Um, I've already started a few down there, but I'm um, just trying to tie this all in so that it kind of fits and hopefully it'll, hopefully this will all make sense when we're done. It's already looking cleaner in these little spots where we've done it, but once it's painted white, we expect to see a big difference. And I have shiplap this whole area here for now. And I'm planning on giving it a coat of paint uh, to make it look nice. I've kind of sealed that whole area in. That was a little uh, weak spot before where the heat would come out from the engine as I drove. So I'm hoping I fix that up with some spray foam and some insulation. 
But uh, this is what I'm working on now. I've pulled all this out. I'm going to replace a lot of this stuff, new electric outlet, and we're going to paint it. So I'm going to go ahead and be quiet and paint, and I'll show you the finished product when I'm done. Okay, so as you can see, the paint is done. And I also have another video. I've done a little bit of work here as well. Uh, this is where our TV is going to be mounted. And I'm going to share a link uh, above here or down below. Check both places for uh, this whole process where we wired the new uh, wiring through for a, a television and electricity and all that good stuff. But we've got the paint done. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. We just kind of went all the way around the front with the white paint. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're good with it. Uh, we've installed also a new seat belt uh, that we bought online at seatbeltsplus.com and put a whole brand new one in here so that uh, we don't have the old ugly seat belt that was, uh, that was there before. And also replaced the old power outlet with uh, a USB port enabled outlet as well. So that's really helpful. Uh, you know, obviously in the passenger seat, probably gonna be somebody wanting to charge up their phone so we got these uh, USB enabled outlets off of Amazon, Kung Fu King. And they, uh, so far they've been, they've been really good. They're made in China, but they're cheap and they work. And they're nice and uh, I like the way they, they look. Uh, this piece here just clicks right on as a cover. So it kind of protects it, makes it look good. And now we have a good, good little bit of power. Uh, right next to the uh, the passenger seat and then we just put a little bit of a border around the around the bottom but happy with how this has turned out so far that's it for our episode on demolishing this driver's console area uh, we've done a lot of demo work but now we've got to do some rebuilding so we've got a whole episode on uh, rebuilding our, our dog house uh, if you don't know what that is check out our next video and you'll see that whole process from beginning to end and we also have a whole video coming up on driver's seat replacement, passenger and driver's seat. So the whole process from where we bought it uh, through delivery all the way through install. So we've got a whole episode on that. If you're thinking about replacing your seats in your RV, uh, check out our video and you can see the process and what we went through. Uh, we've got a lot more videos coming up. Um, our bathroom we're redoing, our flooring. We're doing a whole bunch of work in this RV. And if you subscribe to our channel, you'll be the first person to know whenever we post new content. So please subscribe, uh, like this video, leave some comments below. It would be great to hear from you if you watch this and let us know your thoughts. So uh, please do that. Check again for any new videos we've got in the future and we'll see you next time. Thanks.